This week, the Rhode Island Legislature is considering a bill which would allow adult adopted citizens access to their original birth certificates. While similar legislation was considered last year, this year's bill includes a no-release clause, providing birth parents a mechanism to prevent the release of identifying information to the adoptee. Why is this legislation so important? Why do adoptees need their original records? Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Daryl McDaniels of Run DMC artfully captured the way in which secrets affect adoptees in his testimony to the New Jersey Senate. I remember when I went to search for my birth mother and I said, I want my birth certificate. And the lady looked at me, she said, that don't exist and this what killed me, to you. So you mean you know if there's something that says who I am and you know that there, and you know it's on the paper and, and, and it don't exist to me, do you know how that hurt me? That is somebody's identity, y'all. Our situation is our situation, but that information is part of who we are. Along with the strong human desire to know one's roots, which we certainly witness through America's obsession with family genealogy, there are other critical needs for adoptees in having access to their original name. Healthcare professionals have known for a long time that diseases can run in families. That is why we're introducing the U.S. Surgeon General's Family History Initiative. This initiative focuses on a single simple concept. Knowing your family's history can save your life. Most genetic tests, whether it be for breast cancer or colon cancer or conditions like hemochromatosis, are pretty much predicated on whether or not there is a family history. There are very few such genetic tests that are offered to everyone. So with important identity and health needs for adoptee access, what's been the outcome in a state like New Hampshire, which has unsealed previously closed records to their adoptive citizens? We anticipated that um, we'd be in more dire straits. Um, I, I think we thought that the business process would be such that you know, it would overwhelm our office. Uh, there were a lot of people who threw up cost as an element why we shouldn't do this. It doesn't cost us anything. I think the process has kind of proved out that you know, it's really not that cumbersome. I spoke to people in Colorado. They put a $200,000 a year price tag on this piece of legislation, which is utter nonsense. We have not seen uh, the horror stories. We have not seen the negative impact on our business processes. In New Hampshire, we're the most frugal state in the United States, and we did it. We did it based on the $12 fee that we charge everybody else. In addition to New Hampshire, Alabama, Oregon, Tennessee, Delaware, and Maine have all also enacted access legislation, and Massachusetts and Colorado have granted partial access. Not a single incident or breach of privacy has occurred in any of these states. There are also two states which never sealed records, ever. Kansas and Alaska. Their citizens have always had access, and it's worth noting that there have never been incidents of any kind there either. Have I ever heard of any horror stories or where a birth parent's privacy uh, was intruded upon by an adult adoptee? No. Um, I, uh, I haven't. My experience has been that we hear from family members, not just adult adoptees. Um, I hear from grandchildren of adoptees wanting to know more about their family history and uh, where they came from. Some may be quick to point out that in Kansas, records have always been open. One of the major concerns that groups opposing this legislation always bring up is that providing access to the adoptee affects the privacy of the birth mother. It's often stated that birth mothers were promised confidentiality. But there is no law in any state which promises or provides such privacy to birth parents. Adoption law was written to protect the adopted child and family. However, Rhode Island's bill, with its no-release provision for birth parents, does provide a privacy option. And it's important to note that birth fathers' names are generally omitted from these original records in states which have released them. What did the experts doing research on this issue of access say about the issue? The Evan B. Donaldson Institute in New York provides the leading research on adoption in America. My name is Adam Perkin. I'm the executive director of Evan B. Donaldson Adoption Institute. We work every day to help shape the best possible policy and law related to adoption based on research. Adoptees are not stalkers, ingrates, or children who are searching for new mommies and daddies. When we forget that, we start to treat them like children, and we make assumptions that they're going to do something bad if they get information. There is no evidence in all of the states 
that have unsealed these records for adult adoptees that anything bad happens. But this is about Alex Haley's stuff. The right to know who you are and where you come from. Adoptees do not have the same rights and privileges as everybody else in our country. That's wrong, and you have an opportunity to fix it. Thank you very much. Thank you. As the Rhode Island Legislature considers its own access bill, it can be with confidence of success elsewhere and with the knowledge that they are protecting people as they enhance and save adoptees' lives. The folks in Rhode Island don't have anything to worry about, especially where Maine and New Hampshire have passed similar legislation, which has been very successful. Think of how you would feel if you did not know your original identity. Put yourself in the shoes of the adoptee why does it matter to anyone else? I, it's my information, I want it. It's my life.